Welcome to Predator Minute, the podcast that breaks down the 1987 action sci-fi classic, Predator, one minute at a time. I'm John Zabriskie. And I am Jeff Glover. And today we're talking Minute 76. You could call Minute 76 the Mac Lewis. Mac! 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 Of minutes, you could also call it the Sean Bradley of minutes. Well done, still finding ways to work uh, the word <laughs> Mac into our podcast. <laughs> Thanks. It's one of the things I do when I search up the numbers. Is anybody named Mac who wore this number? I think when we talk seventy-seven, we're going to actually carry over, if I remember correctly, Sean Bradley from his seventy-six wearing days to seventy-seven <laughs> wearing days. <laughs> nice, Sean Bradley making two appearances in Predator Minute podcast. And I'm sure, in Space it's Jam. crowning achievement of his career, to be honest. I would say Space Jam's up there too. Oh, right. That's pretty good. Okay. We're talking minute 76 of Predator of Predator Minute? I don't even know anymore. Uh, but <laughs> today is it? <laughs> today is Predator Day. We don't use days of the week anymore. It's just no, no. Wake up and go to bed. <laughs> wake up and go to bed. Minute 76 opens with Dutch giving Anna Anna his weapon and ends with Dutch firing at the cloaked. Predator. Mm. No! no! Wow, John, we have a, a significant minute in front of us here, don't we? Yeah, this might be the most jam-packed minute that we've had so far. Yeah, at least in terms of the impact on our beloved jungle team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, way to bring it back. Yeah, the jungle team. Well done. Yeah, man, well, this is not to spoil things, but we're going to lose two members in this minute. Yes. And that's the only time that's going to happen in this whole film. And uh, they both happen to land in the same uh, minute uh, for the purposes of this podcast. And uh, yeah, so we'll, you know, we'll give each uh, character their their due respect and do our best to uh, honor them. But uh, yeah, we got a lot going on here. Yeah, let's dive into it. So you want to take us from the top of the action to the about the 40 second mark? Sure, the action. Action, Jackson. Yeah, so we'll break this into two parts like we often do. And so this first part is going to be like the first 40 seconds of this minute. And so we carry over and we get uh, Anna Anna, who continues to pull Dutch's gun. Uh, and then, uh, of course, Panchito up the hill. Uh, we cut back to uh, back. to Billy. Back. Back. Who starts his uh, very upsetting <laughs> chest cut here brandishing that knife and just start slowly bringing it down across his chest, um, exposing blood um, as he stares into the jungle. Um, let's see. Uh, then he, uh, we cut back to Anna Anna and Dutch, who's helping Panchito up the hill. Um, we get a, a quick little dialogue from Anna Anna. Uh, Dame la mano. Dame. Dame la mano. Dame la mano. I'm white. Um, <laughs> Give me your hand. <laughs> uh, let's see. Cut back to um, uh, a close-up here of Billy's face. Eyes wide open. We cut to the predator vision of Billy. Uh, sh- shows his knife kind of sitting there, standing there on the log. Um, eyes wide open. We cut back to um, Anna Anna pulling Panchito through the jungle, running now faster through the bush. The team uh, hears Billy's very loud and long scream, which, which we assume and learn is his death scream. Mm-hmm. And the, this section finishes with Dutch and Poncho turning to face the rear with their weapons raised. Mm. Oh, that was emotional just going through that. My goodness. Yeah, that, there's a lot going on in this, just this first part of the minute. There's. Uh, some standoff time. There's some trying to escape with the rest of the team time. There's the predator very, very clearly approaching the rear of the team with the predator vision on. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a, a, a death happening here. So I feel like we should begin with Billy here. Cause yeah. this is really the thing that stands out for me in the first part of this minute. He is really given that death stare up into the jungle and I think we are to assume that he is looking right at the predator, that he sees the predator staring out there. Do you sure, agree with I, that? I kind of agree with that, but the way they show the predator's vision revealing Billy on the log makes it seem like Billy 
or makes it seem like the predator is approaching Billy from under the log because the mm-hmm. log kind of falls away in the predator vision. And then Billy is revealed with the s- chest slash uh, in the predator vision. Um, You're so- right. You know what? Now that you st- – that I'm looking at this scene a little bit differently because I think you're right. Like the way the camera in Predator Vision pans up, you get the feeling that he's looking out into the jungle, but the Predator kind of emerges from below in probably kind of a surprising fashion. Yeah, I think the Predator is just mm-hmm. being a jerk of a hunter, just as, uh, as approaching. He does. Yeah, as he always does, being a, a, using the stealth to, to not be seen at all, but. Billy, with his sixth or maybe even his seventh sense, uh, is definitely picking up that the predator's around, but even though maybe he can't see the predator. What do you make of his chest cut here? Oh, man, that's that's a good question because that's something I've always thought about Billy. You just never know with Billy what his thoughts, what his rationale are. Uh, I guess it could be uh, he's so just ready for the... uh, ready for it that he's he's just doing some ritualistic action to prepare himself i don't know what about you i i think you're right i think it's also his way of saying uh i'm here i'm not scared of you if we're all gonna die i'm gonna die on my own terms Mm -hmm. here's my blood i'm not afraid of my own blood take me if you're gonna take me i'd rather just go out like this face to face eye to eye than be chased down like a like an animal you know that that's my that's my uh, interpretation. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, probably, uh, maybe. probably it's it's forever going to be mystery. There's not going there's not going to be a part later on where he's, he's a man of few words. Really. Yeah, he's a man of <laughs> few words. We don't we don't know. Yeah. So any any guesses are are welcome. Yeah. So this is the the end. This is uh, Billy's demise. Um, a beloved character for us. Uh, Soft spoken, but. Um, principled and tough team member and uh he will be missed he will be missed um before we go into favorites and possible limericks uh, just just a couple <laughs> things to point out production wise we don't see his death and um this is all from the imdb imdb trivia but while there are rumors that go around that say that they cut a more bloody graphic death scene for him uh, it was always the film's vision, or at least John McTiernan's vision, to not show that, to in fact just cut to his death screen off screen. Uh, and I really like that. I, I think that's more powerful, like that, leaving it up to the imagination. It's a, pretty much an instant callback to Dylan's death scream. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting choice because we've been given pretty graphic, gruesome deaths by everybody up to this point, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. And so the choice is made here to leave it, leave it off screen. And yeah, that's, it's an interesting choice. And, and, but it, one that works because Billy's mysterious from the beginning and he remains mysterious to the end. Yeah. I, I guess if you're going to say anything was graphic about his death, it was him cutting his own chest. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, do you have a, a favorite uh, Billy, a quote or line from the film that sticks out to you? Oh, but before we do that, I oh, just want sorry. to give a quick shout out to Joseph Parker on the Predator Minute listeners Palapa mm. for uh, calling back to Dylan's death, which we, which we talked about last minute, I believe. Yes, mm. we talked about that last minute. He said that that was reminding him of The Princess Bride, where Wesley is tortured so much that he screams and people in the far off village. Yeah. People in the far off village can hear his scream. So, yeah, if you have other memorable screams out there, feel free to also contribute to the Predator Minute listeners, Palapa. <laughs> That's a good uh, a good comparison. I liked it. Yeah, but let's talk uh, favorite memories of Billy. Uh, did you have a favorite line or scene or face? Well, my I think my favorite line, my favorite quote, is going to be when Billy and Poncho were were talking and when they first kind of realized that something strange was going on, something was in this jungle that was out to get them. And we get the uh, kind of iconic line where Billy says, there's something out there waiting for us and it ain't no man. Billy, you know something. What is it? I'm scared, Pancho. 
bullshit. You ain't afraid of no man. There's something out there waiting for us. And it ain't no man. We're all gonna die. Mm. We're all gonna die. And I I like that for his character because it's so prophetic. And it's kind of like he's the smartest man in the room from the beginning. He mm-hmm. he knew where this was headed before anyone else knew or anyone else was willing to admit. And he kind of knew it right away. And uh, I, I like that. I think it speaks to his character. Yeah, he is always apparently in possession of some knowledge that the rest of the team doesn't have mm-hmm. with his foresight, with his, like I said, sixth or even seventh sense um, in terms of sensing the danger and sensing the inhumanness of their opponent. He's, he's, he has that stereotypical mystical native characteristic um, that you see in other movies. Yeah. Uh, but it serves the team well, at least in being kind of a harbinger and also being their scout, being the first one ahead. And here he's subverting that by being the last one by being the one to cover their butts yeah in in some ways this is a sacrificial move i think like he's dropped his weapon he went out on the log and it's he's buying time for the rest of his team Mm -hmm. and uh that is a noble act and I, i think that's part of his motivation here is not only is he choosing to go out on his terms he's also sacrificing himself for the rest of his team members that maybe this will buy them time to get away. Did you have any sacrifices in movies that you uh, were reminded of when he's making his stand, his last stand at the log? Shoot. If I had thought of that ahead of time, I could have come up with a list. (laughs) It's off the top of of my head. I, uh, I don't know if I have one. Um, I had a couple and if if you got your memory. Yeah, if you got a couple, go for it. It might make me think of a couple. So yeah, uh, I would say the classic that this calls to mind with the blocking and the stakes are Gandalf in the Lord of the Rings, where he takes on the Balrog in the Mines of Moria. He's you shall not pass. You shall not pass. <laughs> and he sacrifices himself ultimately for the team, but then. Uh, kind of another one that's uh, more of a cult classic. They live at the end of that movie. Spoiler alert. Yes. The character that Roddy Piper, Rowdy Roddy Piper is playing. He uh, has to blow up this alien transmitter so that the whole world knows that the people in charge of everything and in the news and in government are actually a bunch of aliens. Uh, he's right being threatened by people in the helicopter to take him down if, if he doesn't stop and, it continues on, even though it costs him his life. But the benefit is the rest of the world knows that the aliens have taken over. That's such a good one. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I had forgotten about that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love that movie, too. Side note. Have you ever seen this the South Park parody of the fight from They Live? I think I have, just because that, <laughs> <laughs> that fight scene is... It's so hilariously overdone and, oh and they God. just recreate it for the, the show, right? It's like shot by shot recreated. And it's oh, between man. Timmy, who is in a wheelchair. <laughs> oh, it's it's in poor taste and it's also amazing. <laughs> I, I love when uh, people do that creative, those creative minds, because it tells you that they are like that much of a fan of something that they'll do that. It turns into a passion project. Right, 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 right. Like clearly someone who was on that writing team, like loved that movie and decided to work it in. (laughs) Um, I'd I'd have to say my favorite line of Billy's is, I guess it's nothing major just because for years and years, that was a fun saying between uh, my brother, Aaron and myself where we would, kind of mockingly debate whether he's saying to Dutch, I guess it's nothing major Dutch major or he's <laughs> saying, I guess it's nothing major. Like, I guess it's nothing important. Obviously we know it's him saying major Dutch as in using Dutch's rank uh, as yeah, as who he's directing this comment to, but th- that's because of the, 
uh, sentimentality. That's uh, my favorite line. I guess there's nothing major. There. Yeah. But I also like his back and forth with Panchito. Hey, doesn't a character in Armageddon sacrifice themselves on the uh, on the meteor? Yeah, I get. I don't, I don't really remember that movie. I think didn't they all do that, or is that Deep Impact? I'm thinking where they all. Um, I think that might be Deep Impact. I, I feel like there's both. one character in particular that like stays on the. Isn't it Bruce Willis? Is it Bruce Willis? I think it is. There's people out there listening to this screaming at us right now because <laughs> they know. Yeah. The character. and maybe it is. Yeah. Grace, I know I promised you I was coming home. I don't under- understand. <sighs> Looks like I'm going to have to break that promise. So there's Clearly another. a memorable sacrifice. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> didn't Bruce Willis, maybe or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> there's another sacrifice for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, have we reached the point in the podcast where I uh, recite a limerick about uh, Billy's legacy? Uh, last thing, can I say one last thing before you recite a limerick for Billy? I suppose so. Okay, thank you so much. I'll, I'll leave it at this. If, <laughs> if you want, if you were like me and you always wanted to see the Billy versus Predator fight one on one, how it might have happened, you don't know. We'll never know. Uh, then I encourage you to check out the standalone five page comic book uh, that someone wrote for the 30th anniversary of predator. I don't think wow. it's official in any means, but I did post the pictures on our notes page. Uh, it's called Billy's last stand and it's written and illustrated by Luke Forwoodson. Forwoodson. And I'll probably post the, uh, the link to it on our predator minute listeners Palapa page. Uh, but it, it's, it's a nice little internal dialogue about what's or internal monologue about what Billy's thinking and um, maybe his possible last lines as well as some extra little scenes. I'm but why don't you take it right go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm, you posted some screen grabs of it. Yeah. Uh, that, those are all the screen grabs There's just five screen grabs. Oh, well it's, it's cool art. Like anyone who's a fan of the film should check it out. It's cool artwork. All right. So why don't you uh, take us away with the, uh, the Billy Limerick. All right. Here we go. Title of papers. Wait, let me get a. Hang on. Let me get a, pour a little out here in my mouth. <sighs> Title. Billy. 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 <laughs> Strong, steady, and silent is his plan. But he's afraid because it ain't no man. And it ain't no man. He wouldn't wish it on a broke dick dog. I wouldn't wish that on a broke dick dog. But still, he cuts his chest on a log and faces his worst fear in the jungle, man to man. Ooh, nice. There you go. Nice. (laughs) I rhyme man with man. That's my only contention. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no problem, no problem. I like it, well done. Yeah, so there's Billy. Billy. Billy! Rest in peace, Billy. Rest in peace, Billy. Mm-hmm. Drink a cold one for Billy. Yeah, pour some out or into your mouth for Billy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, so with uh, Billy's demise, we have to see what the rest of the team is doing. Our ever dwindling team of now just three. What are they doing, Jeff? Yeah, so we pick up around second 40 here. We uh, we now have a three-person team that is uh, moving through the jungle. We've got Dutch, we've got Anna, Anna. They exchange looks before looking again at the jungle. We see Poncho holding his gun up but shaking the whole time. We oh. cut back to Anna, Anna's face, who's looking on, and then we hear the predator's clicking sound, immediately followed by a shot of the predator in the tree, firing his plasma caster into Ponchito's head, apparently killing him. Poncho falls to the ground. Dutch rolls away. Anna Anna starts to pick up Poncho's gun. Dutch yells, no! Kicks the gun out of Anna Anna's hands and then turns and fires his M16 up at the predator in the tree. And that is the end of the minute. Whoa. Whoa. Just like that, a second character dies. It comes so fast. I forgot how quickly this comes as a one-two punch. And really, just the last couple minutes, like we go from having a full team or what feels like a full team down to almost nobody. It's it's crazy how quickly it happens. Yeah, it it is really really quick. I 
timed it on the movie. And if we're taking the movie to be in real time during this scene, we have all of 13 seconds. That's it between Billy's scream and the headshot that kills Panchito, sadly. Yeah. And even backing that up, like to the last minute, you know, about 60 seconds prior, we lost Dylan. So in the span of Dylan. less than Dylan. Dylan, in the span of what, less than a minute and a half, two minutes, mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. three characters die. That's kind of crazy. That's fast. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. So fast, too fast. We, we hardly knew you. Panchito. <laughs> right. Oh man. Yeah. And, and so it's just so unceremonial. I don't know if that's a word, but it just happens so quickly and it's just a blast to the side of the head and psh, that's it. Oh yeah. It is. There's, it is. You, 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 he's standing there. Well, he's being held up by Dutch and for, you know, that one minute you hear the uh, wall of sound noise that we've heard. Oh, so many times yeah. when we know the predator is around, um, you hear the clicking and then all of a sudden you have a music sting. It jumps to the shot jumps to the predator in the tree firing that laser and hidden Ponchito. There's no laser sight to hint that it's, it's really, really quick. It's it there's no so fast. Yeah. I want to say like the last few deaths had a lot of lead up. Uh, Mac had some lead up with the laser sight going along his arm. Dylan had a long lead up with <laughs> the uh, right. predator blowing his arm off and then coming around to him and, um, Billy had the lead up where you knew the predator was there with the predator vision, but Ponchito, it was, it was over so fast. He doesn't have like a really heroic moment. In fact, when you see the shot right before he's killed, the camera is behind Dutch and Ponchito. You see Ponchito's right arm holding the gun and Ponchito's arm is shaking. It is, it is heartbreaking to see that, to see him go out like that. You know, he's scared. You know he's really hurt. Hurt. Yeah. He's busted up pretty bad. He's busted up pretty oh, bad, Major. Oh. Yeah, it is so quick and abrupt, and um, it, I, I think it's by design. I, I, I think the intention here from the filmmakers, from McTiernan, is to just take this death that's happened with Dylan that they stretched out and was gruesome, and you're kind of shocked by it, and then while you're in that state of shock, is to just boom, boom, hit you two more times and just kind of carry on that feeling so that you are just left with Anna and Dutch and a feeling of dread. And it happens very, very fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, poor Poncho, like no respect. No respect. Yeah. Side of the head. Um, do you, do you think he was being targeted here? Was it aimed at both him and Dutch and he just happened to catch it? Did Dutch get lucky here? Uh, I was watching that scene over and over again of when the predator fires the laser and the laser blast goes right behind Dutch's head. Yeah. So I don't know if it's aimed or Dutch just happened to turn his head at the right time and really luck out. But uh, I, I kind of have the feeling that um, the predator was aiming for Ponchito just to take Ponchito out. Just he's already wounded. He's an easy, he's easy prey. No sport. Yeah. Let's take him out right here. Yeah. Man, I don't know. Boy, it does come very close to Dutch's head, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have the I don't think I have the ability to watch in slow motion, or do I? Oh no, I do. But like something goes flying off of Ponchito's head for for right all the times I've ever watched this. I've thought they don't even give him like uh, you know any kind of effects or gore or anything like that that happens. But something goes flying off. It looks honestly, it looks like a leaf or a fake ear or something like that. Oh, I think it's a leaf. I'm looking at it frame by frame and you get the blue plasma cannon. It goes right behind Dutch's head when it hits Poncho. That's a great effect. When it hits Poncho, you get this, this blast of like sparks. Yeah. And yeah, the thing that flies off of him, I think it's a leaf. It looks like a leaf that goes flying off of him. Right. But there's no like extra blood. There's no, no gore spurting like you had with Mac. It's just unceremonious. Like it's, he's just slaughtered like a, like a cow at a plant. Like it's just blah and it's done. It's very, very sad for Poncho, a character who I didn't think about much. Um, to be honest, when I first started this podcast with you. Um, and then now as we've gone through it so carefully, he's become one of my favorite characters. And uh, it's sad to see him go this way, I think. Yeah, likewise. I, I think the reason we don't think about him as much, and I'm the same way, 
is that he's really front loaded in this movie. He has yeah. a lot of memorable, memorable dialogue and he's shown a lot of confidence and capability at the beginning of the movie that he just is not showing towards the end. He kind of falls apart. He's injured. He's scared. Gets hit by the log. He gets hit by the log twice, once in the face and then once by a, a giant log. Right. Oh, man. Okay, so, well, I guess we can talk about the very last couple seconds here in a moment. But um, yeah. what what else do we have to memorialize Poncho here? I, I, of course, do have another limerick. But before we get to that, um, should we talk about some favorite scenes or favorite moments or quotes? Sure. Yeah, I would say my favorite line easily for him is when he's trading back and forth with Jesse Ventura's Blaine character mm. at the, towards the end of the gorilla camp raid, Jesse says something along the line or Blaine says something along the lines of they're dug in deeper than an Alabama chick. <laughs> he notices Blaine is bleeding. He says, hi, oh, you're hit. You're bleeding, man. And Blaine of course says, I ain't got time to bleed. Ponchito fires some grenades up, blows up the machine gun nest, all this. And before they blow up, he says, you got time to duck. And then all the stuff has fallen on Blaine and Panchito. Oh, yeah. Panchito just has this this great grin on his face, this great like just taking the piss out of Blaine moment. And I, I really enjoy that character interaction between him and Blaine. He really does provide a nice moment of levity there in, in a film that does not have a whole lot of moments of levity. And uh, that that one does stick out. That's a good one. I do love that exchange. Yeah. Did you have a, a particular one? I still love uh, Poncho in the jungle after they've unloaded their weapons into the jungle. And he comes back with just the most honest look of fear and disbelief and says, we hit nothing. We hit nothing. 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 We hit nothing. And I think it's just emblematic of his demeanor and the way he conducts himself through the rest of the film after that point when he it's that moment when he realizes that they are up against something that's beyond what they can take on. And Mm -hmm. it's his realization of that fact there. And yeah, so I just I've always loved that that line. Uh especially going through it with this project with you. I've come to really appreciate that moment more and more. So we hit nothing. We hit nothing. I think is my fave. Nothing. Put it down. Mark it down. Mark it down. <laughs> Mark it down. He, he was always a good barometer for perhaps how we should be feeling during the movie because there are times when he's really confident and there are times when he's really scared. And yeah. here when he goes out, he goes out scared. He does. Nothing oh. wrong with showing some fear. Hey, it's probably part of being a good soldier is, is knowing when to be uh, afraid. And, and Hey, fight or flight, man. Sometimes you got to flight. Right. So you need to know your limits. Don't, right. go, don't yeah. try to be a hero like Billy, right? Yeah, seriously. I guess I guess they both ended up in the same place. But, <laughs> oh, man. I noticed Anna Anna's hair looking a little bit longer here than it has in the past. I went back just a few minutes when she's telling the story uh, about – the tales that she had heard about the predator mm. about the whatever the monster who makes trophies of men and there her hair looked a lot shorter like maybe shoulder width and here her hair is a lot longer i wonder if this is part of some kind of reshoot or something like that because it's such a well actually i don't know if it's part of a reshoot i mean it's a lengthy scene going for a couple minutes here when she's saying yeah that maybe this was just filmed uh, out of order and she happened to have longer hair by this point in the film shoot it's yeah. interesting yeah hmm. uh, let's see anything else this is one of my favorite shots of the movie towards the end when he kicks the weapon out of her hands oh i love this shot yes uh, it's it's such a weird I don't know what you call it, like a myopic shot or like a fisheye lens almost with just the gun. Everything else seems perfectly sized. It's just the gun, when it's aiming, it looks gigantic compared to anything else on the screen. Hmm. I don't know if you noticed that. Yeah, no, it does. And like, I like the whole just fluidity of that shot, how he stands up, kicks his foot, the gun flies out of her hands, and then he swings around and starts firing the gun. It all sort of happens in one failed swoop. It's very satisfying how it all kind of comes together. I don't know. I think that was one continuous shot where he kicks the weapon out of her hand and he turns and fires. I'm kind of, I'm kind of bummed that they didn't just show that because the way 
he kicks it and then he turns. It's very much looking very like a, like a continuous shot. It'd be hard to pull that off with two different takes. I think. I, I agree. I think you're right. And uh, they they cut back and forth. But um, you're right. If they had just left it as a as a single shot, I think that would have been a little cooler. But as it stands, it's still all right, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's still all right. It's still explosive and Arnold yelling with mouth open. Yeah, pretty good. Nice, nice kick there, Arnie. Solid. All right. Can I um, pay tribute to Poncho? Yes, please. Pay tribute to the Ponchito. All right. This one. I had to write two limericks, everybody, for this one episode. <laughs> Uh, so this one is a little shorter and more to the point. <laughs> uh, all right. <clears throat> Title, Poncho. Poncho. He shoots his weapon till the ammo's been had. He hits nothing. We hit nothing. And you know shit is bad. Nothing. But after being smacked by a log and falling into a bog, he gets shot in the head and it's sad. <laughs> and it's sad. And it's sad. Because <laughs> right, well done. Done. they're like, oh shit, he got shot. And it's sad. It is sad. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Well, All good. Right. Nicely done. Nicely done. I, I like. I like the falling into a bog. <laughs> Although I don't think it was really a bog, but it rhymed with log, so it got in there. <laughs> yeah. It made, it made the cut. I like it. After being smacked by a log and falling into a bog, he gets shot in the head and it's sad. It just had a nice flow to it. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you so much for writing two limericks. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. I um, hope everyone is enjoying my uh, mediocre attempt at uh, constructed poetry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. Give yourself more credit. It's, it's, that was solid. That's some solid poetry. Because you're telling the story of like the character... Oh. throughout the whole movie that's that's not an easy feat well thank you thank you i put a whole uh, 10 minutes into it so <laughs> <laughs> log log bog 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 rhymes bogs. bogs are in jungles yeah wade bogs <laughs> played sports <laughs> sports <laughs> where are we are we uh, near the end here what else we got i, I wanted to end with a line count to Ooh. show how many words each of the characters have spoken each of the characters has spoken. <laughs> Whatever. I told all the, li- all the lines and the words spoken uh, from all the characters. Wow. And I don't know if you looked ahead. Did you already look ahead at all the words that they wrote down, that they said in the movie? Uh, I'm looking at it right now. Oh, okay. It's in your notes, right? Did you like literally go through and just count? Because all the movie, I, if you remember, I've been just keeping track of all the lines they've been saying. Oh, yeah. Just minute to minute. It's, it's a lot easier if you just do it minute to minute. It's right. They can pile up where you're doing like five or six minutes worth of lines. And it's not a ton still, still but it's, I'm, yeah, it's yeah. It work. Yeah. So I would, I would take down the, the words. And then when the character died, I would, you know, highlight their column a certain color to right, to say, okay, this character is done. But then I took all the words from each of those columns and totaled them up. Yeah. And in the, in the end, Dutch ends up with about 915 words spoken. Mm. Dylan in second place. Dylan. 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 Has about 809 words spoken. Mac is third Mac. place. Mac. Mac. With 429 words. Mm. Ponchito, who we just lost here, a, a surprising fourth place, 338 words. Mm. And then from there, it's it's a lot, lot fewer words. It's Billy with 178 uh, it's Hawkins with 134 and Blaine with 79 words spoken in the film. Wow. Blaine. Yeah. Hmm. Blaine. Blaine. Saw, uh, speak softly and carry a big gun. Uh, hmm. So I don't, know, I don't know if you could make anything from the word count, but it was just interesting to me to see that uh, maybe the less trained actors like Jesse Ventura, Sonny Landham, and definitely Shane Black had the fewest words compared yeah. to the other I'm actually, I mean, I guess it makes sense that Dutch has the most words, but mm-hmm. uh, I, I don't know if I would have guessed that. Well, I guess I would have actually, but um, I maybe would have guessed that Dylan, Dylan had the most yeah. words up until this point. But mm-hmm. I, I guess it makes sense when you think back, like Dutch has had one-on-one conversations with like every team member. So that makes sense. If he's in every conversation, he's going to stack up those words. Yeah. Right. He's giving commands all the time. Yeah. Yeah. 
Hey, how's our kill count doing? Man, our kill count. Did we update it last minute? I don't know. I think no, we, we forgot did to. We did not. I don't think we did, but I guess we'll just lump 75 and 76 together for the purpose yeah. of this kill count. But yeah. um, at the end of this minute, we've, or yeah, at the end of these two minutes, we've now added three more deaths to the kill count. We're at 99 so far for the mm. movie. 99. 99. Wow. So I think we need one more to just top it off, give us a nice, even hundo. I wonder if we'll get that. I wonder if we'll get that too. You know, we might, we might not. (laughs) Okay. So how are we doing? Have we done this minute justice? Are we ready to move on to recommends? Do you have anything? Okay. Yeah. What do you have to recommend, Jeff? <laughs> Recommends this week. I, I mentioned last week that I was going to try to curate a list of action movies that were available easily on streaming services that I would recommend to you all, Predator Minute listeners, because I know you love action movies. Mm-hmm. And last weekend, or last week, excuse me, I recommended a Triple Threat, which mm-hmm. was a fun one. Um, And this week, uh, I've got uh, another Netflix streaming film to recommend. Okay. And uh, this one is called Revenger. Revenger. (laughs) Revenger, I know. Um, This is also an an Asian uh, action movie, although this one comes out of South Korea rather than Indonesia. Um, It turns out that there's a lot of pretty decent uh, action films that are Asian uh, on Netflix that I have not seen. So I've been excited to check these out because the martial art, I I love a good martial arts film. So Revenger is an interesting one. Uh, The plot is simple. Um, It's sort of uh, a revenge movie a la like The Raid mixed with uh, Escape from New York. Because it is about a, a, a detective, a South Korean detective that is sent to an island that is basically an island prison where the worst prisoners are sent to this island to just live freely and uh, exist on this island out in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the Pacific, I assume. And okay. so this detective um, heads to the island to infiltrate it and find the boss slash leader of the island who also has killed his entire family. Oh. So it's a, it's a revenge film. Um, it's got some good martial arts, got some great stunts. Um, it's got a little bit of humor in it that was unexpected that I enjoyed. Um, it can at times feel a little bit corny, but... Um, Again, with a movie like this, I'm looking for 90 minutes of entertainment that has lots of good action sequences and martial arts fighting scenes. And uh, what happens in between, I'm not that concerned about. So (laughs) if you're like me and that sounds good to you, check out Revenger. It's on Netflix um, and it's uh, worth a watch. So check it out. Nice. Yeah. More action movies to come. I've got several in the queue. I'm going to keep on doing my homework. Nice. Yeah, thanks for thanks for uh, doing the podcast homework there. Oh, my pleasure. Appreciate that. Yeah. Keeping the recommends going. What you got for us this week, John? Oh, boy. Uh... <laughs> I can see you've put a lot of thought into this. <laughs> As usual. <laughs> I haven't done a lot of prep for the recommends, but I don't think I've mentioned this, but... Um, Sarah and I have been wait- making our way through all the episodes of the Gilmore Girls TV show wow. since really the beginning of the school year, I want to say. And it's quite a show. I-, I think if you know quirky characters or if you have quirky family members or if you've ever lived in a small town, that you'll connect really well to this show. It also has really quick, witty writing and the characters are multi-dimensional and you want the best for them, but at the same time, you could be like mad at them and really like them and, you know, see them as real people. Uh, so I, I think it's a really solid show. I, I especially like all the connections to, or I like all the connections that we see like in our little town um, that you can also see in Gilmore Girls' little town of Stars Hollow. It has a great daughter-mom relationship situation. Wow, look at you guys. I was about to make fun of you for recommending Gilmore Girls, but you know what? You do you. Good job. (laughs) You do you. (laughs) 
no, uh, in all sincerity, uh, I do know that there is a, a rabid fan base around that show. And uh, mm-hmm. anytime that exists, I know the show must have some merit. So, yeah, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I used to be a doubting Thomas like you, Jeff. And then I just started watching and then you just couldn't help but fall in love with, you know, the characters and the settings and really the humor. It's like it is a humor packed show. There's like seasons long gags or just like little bits and pieces here where it'll be a running joke that you're just hoping they'll land again, like episode to episode or season to season. And they will like that's a a true sign, I think, of an intelligent writer, intelligent creator. All right. I, I will never watch this show. <laughs> How dare you better. You better watch at least one. <laughs> tell, your, tell your wife to boot it up some night. <laughs> Watching Gilmore uh, Girls. Yeah, the whole thing. All right. Hey, recommend right. section is for you and you alone. So <laughs> do it. You do you. <laughs> you do you. Do. You do you. The title of a recommend section is You Do You. So, Jeff, <laughs> where in the world can people find you? Oh, you'll find me watching Gilmore Girls and Revenger on split screen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> find me on the Twitter. Jeff Glover, Carl underscore Hungus 314. Come follow me there. My name is Carl Ichbin Expert. My name is Carl Ichbin Expert. <laughs> I'm here to fix the cobble. Hello. My name dispatcher says there's something wrong with Dinah Cobble. <laughs> The cobble. I won't tell you what happens next. He fixed the cable. <laughs> <laughs> Big Lebowski. Uh, you can find Predator Minute on the Twitter at Predator Minute. You can email the show, PredatorMinute at gmail.com. Or like I said before, you can join the conversation on Facebook at the Predator Minute listeners. Palapa! Target the center of the Palapa. Target the center of the Palapa. Target that center of the Palapa. If you are interested in seeing what other Movies by Minutes podcasts there are, go to moviesbyminutes.com, where at the top of the screen, you'll see really the originators of this movement, where we break down a movie minute by minute, the Star Wars Minute podcast hosted by Alex Robinson and Pete the Retailer. The count total now is at 152 different Movies by Minutes podcasts with the Latest one being, chronologically speaking, the Movies by Minute podcast for 1982's movie Tron. Mm. So check it out if you're interested in Tron or check out that website to see uh, any other movies you might be interested in. And there's a good chance you are because they cover a wide variety of genres and series. Seriously, and, there's if you love yeah. a movie, there's probably a Movies by Minutes podcast about it at this point. <laughs> probably. And we need to bring this Movies by Minute podcast to an end. So for all things Predator Minute 76, I've been John Zabriskie. And I'm Jeff Glover. And until next time. <sighs> stick around. Stick around. Stick around. Stick around. We hit nothing. We hit nothing. You got time to duck? You got time to duck? <laughs> It ain't no man. We're all gonna die. <laughs> We're all gonna die. ¿Qué más quieres que te diga? She says the same fucking thing. The jungle that came alive and took him. Billy. Billy! You know something. What is it? I'm scared, Pancho. Pancho. Bullshit. You ain't afraid of no man. There's something out there waiting for us. And it ain't no man. Day, I was going down to my girlfriend. I said to her, Jace, you got a big pussy. Jace, you got a big pussy. She said, Why did you say that twice? And I said, I didn't. See, 
It's got because of the echo. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Get that stink of shit out of my face. Bunch of slap jawed f around here. This stuff will make you a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus. Just like me. Yeah, strap this on your sore ass plane. <laughs>